<laughs> Hi everyone. My name is Stacy. I'm here with Sharon. How are you guys? Hi. So welcome to the African Having Bad podcast. This is the fourth or fifth episode. Fourth or fifth episode? Fifth. Yeah. This is the fifth episode of this podcast, the African Having Bad podcast. So thanks to all the guys who listened, commented, gave us feedback, shared, shared, followed us on Spotify. Yeah. Thank you so or much. reviewed as well. And also, if you've not followed us, please kindly follow, follow us. We are a journey to a hundred followers. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think we're at 20. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, we're at 20 on Spotify. Do people follow podcasts? Yes, yes. Or you follow the account? Do you have a spot? Oh, of course you have a spot. I do. Account. Let me just check. So right now oh, I'm checking the Spotify. Square or the spot. If, Shari, if you've not followed us, what's the name of the podcast? But anyway, African. you'll make our 20th follow, you'll, you'll be our 20th follower. Oh, following. I've followed ah, it, Perfect. Yeah. So, mm. so today, what are you doing, Sharon? So we made the bold move to read <laughs> a very political book. A non-fiction. A non-fiction political book. And Stacey is not a big fan of non-fiction books, right? Sure. But we decided to read the book by Ngugi Wadiongo, Decolonizing the Mind, the Politics of Language in African Literature. So for context, um, I want to ask a few questions to Stacey, just about the theme of the book. Okay. Yeah. What's your native language and do you speak it? Because the book is about African language and the colonial system and the decolonization of the language of African countries. Mm. What's your native language and do you speak it? Do you want to share that? <laughs> native language. <laughs> my, native, my name is JC. Okay, let me not say my second name. But, I love what I Google. I love what I want to say. <laughs> That's my fear. I feel like I want to be anonymous. We'll but, be silent. Yeah, but I'll answer this. Uh, my native language is Kalenjin. To be specific, I'm a Keo. Mm -hmm. But my mom is my mom is Nandi. My dad is Keo. We live in an African society, so the children takes up the culture of the tribe. Yeah. So Keo. But they, yeah, Keo. Do you speak the language? Do I speak it? Yes. Is it broken? Is it perfect? It's not perfect for sure. But I understand. When you're in a scale, like in this year, there's an actual word for it. Oh, really? I don't remember the word, but it's a, quite a technical word and I liked it. Yeah, but I understand the language. Yeah. I speak it here and there. Is it the most perfect? Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I, where uh -huh. I stand with that, I am a Maraquet, mm -hmm. which is also under the sub tribe of the Kalenjin. Yes. I do speak the language, but it's not, I think, the accent, Sina. Mm. I know the language, I can speak it, but when, when you off, speak, what you talk like, who you are. Who you are. Who you are. Exactly. And I'm not proud about it. I'm not proud of it. Yeah. But I feel like my life with my grandmother would have been so much more seamless if I was able to speak that. Very yeah. Thing. But yeah. How many languages do you speak? I speak, so it's Kalenjin. English and Swahili. English, Swahili, a bit of French. What? Yeah. Today I years old. Ah. When I'm learning this about you. <laughs> so you know how guys went for driving school to do computer after, after high, high school? school? Mm. May took up French. Yeah. Oh, French LD. Yeah, there's an alliance Francais. For real? Yeah. Copy? Zen mall. Ile mall, yeah. Actually. It was cut out. <laughs> Anyway, okay, yeah. so our, since the book is about African languages, yeah, um, we, I would like to know if you've read any book that was written in an African language. Is so in an African time? language? It is, yeah. Yeah, because we read, all of us, if you pitied the 844 system. Can't relate. You did pitied the 844 <laughs> system. <laughs> She did, guys. You, you read in Swahili. Yes. You rewrote Swahili. Mm. You yes. learned Swahili in school. But after school, I haven't read anything in Swahili. Yeah, that was what I was supposed to 
us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is unfortunate because we read many African books written in we read many But even if if you think about it, do people do write do you know any writers who write in Swahili books that are not academic for academic purposes like to be a set book or things like that? Because personally I don't know any Swahili novel mm. that you can just read for entertainment or such. I think I don't. I haven't. Yeah. I haven't read that. But, but that's fine. Um, so you haven't read any... S- but non- I feel our Tanzanian brother and sisters would have a novel in Swahili. Kakazetu. Kakazetu. Majirani. Jirani. Kamari ya mama. Jirani. Anyway, yeah. So um, I think the general theme of the book is... I think we can get into the book. Yes, yes, yes. So the general messaging of the book that Ngugi tries to pass on is that... This is the history of why English is the most widely spoken language in this country. Yes, yes, yes. And for many African countries. So um, what do you think are the themes yes. Gugi tried to portray in the book, Decolonizing the Mind? First of all, mm. as I disclose that Jamal is also my kitab. It's fine. Let me just say that I haven't finished the book. The plan was for me to read the book yesterday on Friday. Yeah. But I was on leave. Because yeah, I was on leave. Explained. But I... Could not life finish the, life happened. I had to work. Yeah. Um, so I have read the book halfway. Yeah. I have caught on the some of the messaging of the book to yeah. say, oh, this is why we speak English a lot. And yeah. going through the I remember how we chose this book. I asked Sharon, maybe we should because she she wasn't a avid reader. So I am now. She is now. She's trying Allegedly. to be Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> you're not there, but you're a work in progress. Yeah, yeah. So I asked Sharon, amongst your books that you have, which one has the least pages? Akaona Kanyambe and Decolonizing the Mind. Okay. So even me, as I was choosing this book, I didn't think it's this. It's a heavy book. Yeah. You need to think a lot while reading. And you but you asked me why. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Book, so choosing this book, I thought it's a fiction and it's an easy read. That's why I was like, Nita, Atami, I'll read the last week since it's just a hundred pages. You, but let me tell you torture. something. Mm-hmm. You need to think as you read this book. Yeah. So hectic. Uh huh. Yeah. So let me just read the back of the book. It says that Ngugi describes the book as a summary of some of the issues in which I have been passionately involved in mm. for the last 20 years of my practice in fiction, theater, criticism, and in teaching literature yeah yeah so since it's talking about language when you were in primary school we had discs yes we did have discs mm. and so to the people who did not attend the 844 what are discs Braban. sharon the braban people in the and the likes so for context um the history of colonialism did a, a lot of harm for the kenyan one of the african languages right yeah so our local indigenous languages were viewed as the less superior ones. Mm. And this went into the academic system as well when there's when the public public school system started to punish you for speaking language that isn't English. Yeah. So, so Swahili, you exactly. We had a day to speak Swahili on yeah. Fridays. Mm. So the rest of the four other days of the week you had to speak in English. And if you said even a single word that's not an English word, yeah. You yeah. would be punished for it. The punishment was in form of wearing a disc, which was usually like a signboard you wear on your neck. To is signboard is a bit too much. Okay, maybe like, a billboard, a small bit. A billboard. small billboard on your neck saying <laughs> that, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I spoke English. Or it's like a bone. Fupaya, nyama. Yo, bone. I swear to God, it's <laughs> gonna boil. That's so sad though. Yeah. A bone. Anyway, I remember. Reading through the book, even Gugi with Yongo touches on the issue of the discs. Because them, because he was a colonial child. Yeah. And by colonial child, like same. And by colonial child, I mean, like, he was, like, he experienced colonialist at first hand. Yeah. So, Vilona Sema, like, they banned... Gekuyu language, yes. they banned Swahili and all the traditional languages. No, not traditional, native language that we have. Yeah. Um, um, so let me read an, an expert, ex, ex, 
Ah next Jamaliza. Oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am really confused. What was I saying? Not confused. Kuongea. Mwende uko. Mwende muongelee uko kando. Not to distract. To go strict. No, you're loud. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so he touches on being given a placard when you speak English or Swahili mm-hmm. and he was saying how unfair it is because like why are you giving me this for speaking a language that I know I'm born of mm-hmm. and things like that and it's not like it was a punishment to them but in a way it's brought up um unconsciously they felt the language is bad primitive less a value than english because they awarded so much you had reward to people who spoke good english yeah brought good english and such yes proceed very related to that let me read an a, a statement in his book page 18 mm. so he says in the colonial kenya our own native languages were associated with a low status humiliation corporal punishment and slow-footed intelligence and the ability or downright stupidity non intelligibility and <laughs> barbarism this was reinforced by the world he met in the works of such geniuses of racism such as rider agard it is yeah so he used almost 10 words to descri- the 10 really bad words Adjectives, to describe yeah the way english or the way our languages were, were viewed because yeah. also i remember um there's this let me read this excerpt from his book why he touched on language because he felt like language is a carrier of culture yes so when the colonialist came one of the strategy was to demean um Gikuyu and all our native languages so that that can be used and by doing so they can erode our culture and and enforce their cultures to us. to us exactly yeah, 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 yeah. exactly mm. yeah. so um i i think I, it's important for me to point out that ngugi said that this was the first the last book that he was writing yes. in english mm. and he published it in the 19 1970s or yeah He said that this is the last book I'm writing in English. Everything else is going to be written in Kikuyu or Swahili. Swahili. And then he'll hire a translator to write it. That's a very bold move. It I is. think Gugi Wathiongo was a rebel. Yeah. He's, It's a rebel. He's, he's still alive, yes? He is. He's a professor. <laughs> he teaches. He is a rebel, yeah. for sure. Then that was a very bold move of him. And weird enough, he still gets recognitions and awards. even after making this bold move yeah mm. yeah i get it so have you ever sent an email in swahili no like uh, aside from your barua kwandika insha i don't think i've ever written anything in swahili yeah as a whole i want to write someone an email i think it would be perceived as an is it tanzanian <laughs> so, <laughs> he or she will be east african or a kenyan yeah. and i hope that they Yeah. What else did you pick up from the book? Anything else? Mhm. So I remember that he this book is an essay of Gwa so? Thiong of some sorts and I remember he quoted some very uh, famous or well-known writers in Africa like the likes of Chinanchebe and such. Yes. and there's a quote where he said i feel that english language will be able to carry i feel that the english language will be able to carry the weight of my african experience but it will have to be a new english still in full communion with its ancestral home but altered to suit new african surroundings i thought that was quite an interesting excerpt from chinoachebe which kugi wathyongo quoted in this book which made me think about the english the nigerian speak the pidgin. pidgin english like it's not fully english it is a mixture of english and the Their nigerian language, language. Mm-hmm. so that was quite interesting maybe maybe i'm not saying 
anything. Mm-hmm. But one of my con- <laughs> <laughs> disclaimer. Disclaimer. But I have a feeling this is one of the founding fathers of Pigeon. Of Pigeon English. Chino Chino ah, yeah, why I think, you think so. so. From his the, from the excerpt I've read. Oh, yes. Then he's like, yes, it will be English, but it's a new English. You get let's take up the language of the colonizer and make it ours. And make it ours. Because yeah. at, at the end of the day, it's not our language. Yeah. 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 Do you think that let me read something and then you let me know if you agree with Ngugi. Okay. He said that. The question is this, we as African writers have always complained about the neocolonial economic and political relationship to the European, uh, to Euro-America, but we continue to write in foreign languages, paying homage to them. Are we not, the, are we not on the cultural level continuing the, that neocolonial, slavish and cringing spirit? <laughs> What's the difference between a politician who says Africa cannot do without imperialism and a writer who cannot do without the European language. Okay. So his point is, mm. as writers, we should make it a political statement by refusing to write in English. You're the writer in this podcast. So mm. Would you ever, when are you going to publish a blog post written in non-English? Mm, college. Actually, before we continue. I can't write in Kale, that's your task. <laughs> Swahili basi. In Swahili, I can. Yeah. So to could pay a challenge for April. No, don't give me challenges. There's <laughs> one I failed and I'm yet to go back. But I see what you're saying. Yeah. Would I ever do that? Maybe. Mm-hmm. It's not as strong. No, I won't. I will not. But to your question mm-hmm. um, about the excerpts. Yes. What was your question? My question was, do you think that the same way uh, uh, politicians will say that as Africans we cannot do with Europe like without the Europe from Africa. Aid, yeah. Does that also relate to our language? Like, should writers say that? Swali likwa ni nini? Bwacha ni confirm. Even that question, really, the statement says that. What's the difference between a politician who says mm. Africa cannot do without imperialism and the writer who says Africa cannot do without European languages? Is that a false equivalent? Is it like? Strong statement. I mean, so it does make sense. It makes sense in yeah. a way, but I'll I'll give the context to when Gugi wrote this book. Yeah. He wrote it at the fire and at the heart of colonialism. Yeah, like Ilko Ime Ime Shika Menoga Ime Menoga. So him, this was. I feel like this was his form of rebellion. You get, yes. and rightfully so because he felt like the. Culture, African culture is being swept and eroded away by this white man. Yes. Okay, that was like 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Saizi, so we are in 2024. Um, also, bear in mind, culture evolves. Like yeah. it's people. Languages do as well. And languages is culture. evolve mm-hmm. and this culture and everything. So me, I can't like sit here and speak that, oh, we should not use English yeah. language. Like I feel like in it's a globalized in a in a globalized in a global ma- mm. in a what? Globalized market. <laughs> in a in the global world right now yes. where it's so interconnected and you need English to be able to understand each other and communicate. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it will be a bit of Nikwenda Sana. A stretch. Yeah. And even I'm saying this, I'm even ashamed because yeah. you No, I think it's just accepting the, it as a matter of fact that we yeah. live in a world that unfortunately mm. is very connected to English speakers. Yes. And, and I think one of the things that he also mentioned is we have Anglophone African countries yeah, 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 and yeah. Francophone African mm. countries. Mm. These are not our languages. Rather, they were not our languages until colonialism. Yes, came. exactly. So Maybe now we, should we just have accept named culture evolves. That culture evolves. And language exactly. evolves. I think that's why I usually struggle when people say, oh, wakenya wajuku ongea kiswahili, watazende ni wanajua kiswahili ya ukweli. It's like, but we can have different versions of exactly. kiswahili. Exactly. Like, we I can would, have I the coastal, like even in Kenya, we have the coastal swahili, no, swahili abara. And we, Tumekumbuka. at the end of the day, we understand each other. <laughs> Tumekumbuka. Yeah, accent. Change accent. Yo, let me yeah, tell you. Because I said it. <laughs> Accent, I'm going to change suddenly. So, to a coast. 
So anyway, Jana, huh? your pet yeah. story. Eh. Out of your bad. Okay. Let's cut it out. Let's cut it out. Okay. So um so I usually struggle when people say, "Ah, so okay, what can I'm doing Kiswahili ni? I try to say my I would probably never speak Kiswahili the way we used to see we used to speak in in primary or high school. Yes, yes. The way books are I'm never going to speak that in the day to day. Kwa tunaambi watu wacha kusema ati yo aliendanga. Kujako. Kujako. Shout out Kaka Mega. Alam am alam sik binuru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's I think um I accept that cultures evolve, but also it's also key to notice like to know that at the end of the day language is just a tool of Medium. communication mm. yeah yeah it, it does not mean that it is yes it's part of culture but it's not the culture itself yeah. it's just a tool of communication does that also i think this is quite related to the naming system yeah, yeah, would yeah. you drop your quote unquote english name i like my english name yeah, will nice. i drop it no yeah because yeah because i feel like It's culture. It's not culture. It's it's a I nice mean, name. I like it. So yeah. why should I drop it? Yeah. yeah. I don't like But if I marry name. a white man, mm. would I drop my like native name? Why would you drop your name? No, I won't. Salad his. I don't think I'll even add my name anywhere. You, his name. Oh really? Yeah. I don't see why I do, do that. Sija elewa why people do that. Oh, culture. Oh, culture. Okay. It's part of culture. It's part Language of culture. culture. Yeah. Anyway, so the naming thing um I would really want to drop my Sharon name. Oh really? But I don't like how my middle name and second name has it yani has it flow. You want it to be just my middle name second and last name. But has What's your middle name? Jakambia <laughs> Badai. <laughs> yeah. Jakambia Badai. So anyway. I, I think I'll also read an excerpt that I found interesting. But you want to say something fast as I look for it. No, you can look for it. Okay so so there is this yes. part again he quotes Chinwachebe a lot and Chinwachebe so I'll just read it Chinwachebe once decried the tendency of African intellectual you've read, you've read that Ebu anza tena so Chinwachebe once de- decried the tendency of African intellectuals to escape into abstract universe eh Universalism. In the words and even apply more issues. I I'll quote Africa has had such a fit in the world that the adjective African can call up hideous fears of rejection. Better than to cut out all the links with this homeland, this liability and become one giant leap of universal man. Indeed I understand this anxiety but running away from oneself seemed to me like a very inadequate way of dealing with an anxiety and if writers should opt for such escapism who is to meet the challenge so he was just seeing how being african in itself people see us as lesser humans lesser culture yeah. primitive culture and the words the adjective you read to us like the 10 yeah the 10 yeah. adjectives so it's like if we touch from being an african and become this liberal man that the white man perceives to be perfect yeah. now what's the point it's just to to escape the reality the, the reality and escaping oneself because at the end of the day you're black you're african you have cultures yeah so for you to fit in a position to to want to fit in the world and be viewed as african african or a liberal african man mm-hmm. what's the point to what end to what end yeah. yeah i get it i get it yeah yeah how not to fit in yeah. and not accept as i said gugi wathiongo is a very rebellious person yeah, yeah. Colonial child. I don't like that. Thing. Not That's thing. it. Yeah, but also one of the messaging that he said is that languages do evolve. He yes. acknowledges that languages evolve. Just what you said. Yeah. And we can speak the same language, but we have different. There are differences in intonation, pronunciation. Yeah. Same way we have British English, yeah, and American English, mm. and Australian English, and Scottish English. Scottish. <laughs> That's how they pronounce it. <laughs> 
<laughs> Scottish English. Scottish, yeah. Yeah, so it's the same way our languages can also evolve. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any other takeaway from this particular book? <sighs> I, I think I'll guys, try to read it again. You will. When <laughs> I am when I am less stressful. That's how I beat it. The demonstration. Demonstration again. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So I want to lie to you. This is a very heavy, heavy, heavy book to read. It's only only a hundred pages. It's not a walk in the park. You oh, need which, to think a lot. Yeah. Which page did you get? It says something. Oh, that's already halfway through. Yeah, class. it needs you to think a lot. So if you're going to read it, just go with that in mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it also makes your mind think about things like language, mm-hmm. about the times Bungi lived, yeah, why he's so angry, much angry yeah. with the oh. English yes. language, mm-hmm. yeah. Also, his oh, side note, his children they don't have Eng- English names. Yeah, because they're not English. Yeah. I think but, one of the things I usually struggle with names is and you don't have Oh, so what's your English name? Exactly. Mine is Cheboy. Mm-hmm. And I once went to my lecturer Uko J Kwat and I have always introduced myself as Cheboy, which is my surname. So you say Akaniambia, but that's a man's name. What? Yeah. It's a man's name, Nikamia, but it's my name. It's my father's name. He gave it to me. It's now mine. Mm-hmm. Um, no, don't introduce yourself by your father's name. Use your English name. Or rather, he said, use your first name, which but is typically your English your name. name. But it's my name, Alini Pea. Yeah. I thought I see the man's are fresh. And this is almost <laughs> like four trade. years ago. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah. But I also struggled reading this book, mostly because of time. Yeah. And also, as much as it's a topic I love reading about, mm. decolonization, neocolonialism, aid, dead aid, I still struggled a bit. Maybe I'm not smart enough. You are just... Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, any closing remarks? Which So, so I can tell you to me any fiction kind of thing? Guys, it's about two weeks I've been trying to read and fiction. And I'm afraid this is the last two books I'm reading that is not fiction. For the years. you yeah, I'm a Why forever. am I thinking as I read? I read to be entertained. You're just a girl. I'm just a girl. But yeah. now to think, life already does that to me. So Every why day. should books <laughs> do the same thing? But anyway, that's just me. Yeah. So I think that's it for this episode. Yeah. You have anything else to say? No, I'm just curious to know mm. if people in the in the listeners list have read this book mm. and if they liked it, how they felt about it. Did it change yeah, yeah, yeah. your perception towards language? Mm. Did it affect your mental process in any way? Did you struggle reading it? Did you enjoy it? I'm very curious to hear Tell us that. about it on the comment section. Yes, please. Again, please follow us on Spotify. It will help us grow and reach more people. Yeah. That's it for us. From Bye. us. Bye. Bye.